Hello and welcome to A Little Crafting. Uh, my name is Annie and I am recording this from Surrey which is in the south east of England in the UK. And um, This is by my bi-weekly podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the last couple of weeks um, and today is the 10th of October which is actually my birthday <laughs> um, so I'll talk a little bit about what I'm going to do this afternoon um, to celebrate that. Um, I have not been that productive in terms of my knitting um, this last couple of weeks but I have finished a couple of things um, so I will start off by talking about what I'm wearing which is the Spring Sorrel by Woolen Pine um, and I finished this just a couple of days ago I haven't even blocked it yet but I have woven in some ends so that I could wear it today um, and I absolutely love it at the moment. So it is a, um, a short sleeved um, top. It is designed to be cropped but I haven't made it as cropped as the design um, and it has this lovely kind of radiating yoke on the design. It's knit out of DK weight yarn. Um, this one is a BFL DK from River Knits in the Salisbury's colourway. Um, if I stand up you'll be able to see this section which is Industrial Kingfisher by um, Stranded Dye Works in her Castaway DK which is an older base and then at the bottom I've got Silvermond which is the same BFL DK. Um, so you will notice I decided not to fade into the, um, the silver in the end. What I did was I knit all of the industrial kingfisher down to here and then I decided I would just do the rib um, in the silver because it didn't really make sense to start up here and then just have uh, the majority of the silver as the rib anyway. Um, so yeah I absolutely love it. Um, I guess I'm not 100% sure on the variegated colourway in the centre. Um, I'm sure it'll be different if I'm wearing it in spring probably. Um, but yeah, this section is absolutely beautiful. The yoke is my absolute favourite. Um, I did have some pooling as you can see, but hopefully it's not too obvious for the most part. Um, and then I've got the short sleeved sections which have a twisted rib um, in both, for both the sleeves and also the rib at the bottom. Um, yeah, so it's all good. I imagine it will stretch out a little bit and be slightly longer so at the moment I guess it's just below the waistband of my reasonably high-waisted jeans um, and yeah I guess the sleeves will lengthen a little bit and it'll probably loosen out a bit so it won't be quite as as sucked in um, when I'm wearing it in future so it just needs a bit of a wash before I can show it off in, in all its glory next time but I thought I'd wear it today as I cast it off a couple of days ago. Um, so that one is done, I highly recommend the pattern and um, yeah it was really fun to knit especially this yoke section so I will be knitting a full on sorrel sweater at some point in the future. Therefore I'm not really going to talk about any other knitting that I've been doing because I haven't really been doing any other knitting. This was pretty much it, just storming ahead on this project to finish it off and be able to wear it. Um, so what I will talk about is what I'm casting on next and that is going to be the Cotswold Henley um, which is a pattern by Megan Babin and um, I am going to be knitting this for my husband as a bit of a winter jumper for him. Um, I'm going to be knitting it out of Durerum Natura Gilead, which is my utmost favourite yarn. Um, and this colourway is Sedr, which is this lovely kind of um, tree pine green, I would say. Um, show you close up. There you go. Um, but it's not, you know, 100% even in terms of the colouring. So you've got some kind of specks of lighter colours within there, which is absolutely lovely. Um, the Cotswold Henley is a bottom up Henley sweater. So I'll pop a picture just here so that you can see what it looks like. 
Um, and I have started a swatch already, so I have um, knit that to show you. Um, and it's got a lot of texture on it. So rather than it just being a really plain Henley sweater with the collar and the buttons either side, it's got texture down the sides of the waist and also kind of across the, the rest of the sweater, although it's a bit less textured across the rest. Um, so I've done a swatch in one of the textures, as you can see, and it's looking really lovely in this. Um, I think it'll be a really nice subtle texture. Um, so not as obvious as cables, but nice as a kind of varied um, effect rather than it just being a plain um, sweater. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, casting that on. I just need to make sure that my swatch is the right size and then I will storm ahead and cast on that one so that I've got a bit of that to show you next week. Um, so yeah, this is a worsted weight yarn, I believe. Um, and it is one of my favorites. I've knit three sweaters out of it already um, in different colors. And yeah, so this will be my fourth and then I've got another couple of sweaters quantities to use up for myself as well. Um, and Dorero Natura Juliet is 100% organic merino. Um, double check. Yeah, it's merino dal, in which is manufactured in Provence. Um, and it's a Portuguese merino. But yeah, it's really lovely, lovely yarn. Um, and I love it for sweaters because it's so warm. Um, but it's not too scratchy and there is one particular cardigan that I knit for myself which is the Georgetown by Hannah Fettig and that I wear so often um, but it's so warm it's just one of those cozy jumpers that you kind of curl up in and feel comforted when it's cold outside. So yeah that is what I am planning on knitting next. Like I said, I've not really had any other progress on knitting, but I have been doing something else over the last couple of weeks. And that has been sewing. Um, so if you remember, I cast, sorry, you don't cast on in <laughs> sewing, do you? I started a patchwork quilt for a colleague of mine who was expecting um, and I have to say I finally finished it. Last weekend I spent a lot of time just sewing away and cutting and measuring and all of that and cracking on with the project um, and I have finished it now. So what I'm, we'll do, I'll, I'll show it to you. So this is part of the finished result. Obviously I've folded it over. Um, show you the back here. Um, so I've got this purple trim around the edge as well as a purple kind of border also um, and yeah all of these lovely squares and um, so what I'll do is I'll just pop a picture over here and I'll talk a little bit, bit about it. Um, so the main pattern that I used was Darling Pinwheels by Maple Cottage Designs so that was to get the, um, the kind of overall front piece um, sorted out and designed and I used um, a couple of different charm packs so I'll pop those in the description below so that you can see what they are. Um, I chose the charm packs that I did because I wanted a plain colour as well as a, um, a kind of patterned design and um, my colleague is into gaming so I thought the one with the dice would suit it really well. Um, and also it's kind of like a rainbow array of colours which meant that it was suitable for a boy as well as a girl although I have ended up with a bit more pink in there but um, I think the purple kind of offsets that a little bit. Um, one thing that I found with the Darling Pinwheels pattern was that it actually didn't give you any more explanation other than kind of piecing together the top of the quilt. So there was no um, no explanation of how to attach the batting or anything extra to the quilt to make it a finished um, quilt. 
So what I ended up using was an absolutely fantastic set of tutorials by a lady called Melanie Ham. And again, I will link these in the description below. Um, they were absolutely fantastic sort of beginner guide to piecing a quilt and then putting it all together and um, connecting the batting, basting it um, and putting together the edging. Now I did miss a bit of a step so I will um, show you that I didn't actually sew together all of my border um, so I ended up with some sections that are kind of just edges of fabric but I've had some um, some fray prevention um, liquid that I just used so that that doesn't fray when it's actually being used by um, the mum and baby. Um, so yeah, highly recommend Melanie Ham's um, tutorial, they were fantastic. Um, I saw unfortunately she's struggling with cancer at the moment but she does have a regular blog where she posts what she's um, doing at the moment she seems to be a very prolific crafter and also posts a lot on YouTube so I'll continue to follow her and see what she's up to um, and yeah if you want to start making a quilt I'd recommend watching her tutorials rather than actually buying a pattern that you then try and piece together um, because she does start off with just a basic square quilt um, and that seems to work really well. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much it. I'm so, so happy with the way that this turned out and I'm honestly really excited to start making the next one. Um, so there's another colleague who's expecting a baby soon and I thought I'd do the same thing and send that across to, um, to them as well when the baby's born in November. Um, it obviously did take me a, quite a long time to make the quilt and I would say the majority of that was cutting and piecing together rather than actually sewing so that's something that I always get a little bit frustrated with <laughs> with sewing and probably one of the reasons that I haven't launched into it so much before is the fact that you spend so much time measuring and cutting and not actually sewing um, but the finished result is great um, I think it would still have taken longer for me to knit a baby blanket the same size, um, I would say. And considering I'm a beginner at this, I, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out and really thankful for the resources that are out there um, for quilting as well. So that's all I've been up to in terms of actual crafting. I have got some acquisitions to show you, but they're not yarn. Um, so I did have to place an order on Love Crafts for some yarn for my mum because she's making some charity hats. Um, so joining me in that endeavor. And therefore I ordered some fabric um, for my future quilting projects. <laughs> The first set that I purchased was some Peter Rabbit, but kind of more of a, a sort of girl um, colourway, I guess, in terms of it all being pink. Um, and this is what I'm going to use for the quilt um, that I'm making for my other colleague, because I thought that was really sweet as a kind of um, pink and yellow based, but still Peter Rabbit. Um, selection of fabric and this is a fat pack, a uh, fat quarter pack, um, which means that yeah I think I'll get quite a few squares out of each um, quarter and yeah should be able to have enough for a quilt front. What I'm going to do this time is just do those simple squares. Um, partly because I want to try something different and also because I found it quite difficult to do the points on the triangles for the pinwheel blanket but I'll see how I get on uh, with these as well. Um, I also got myself a few more um, fat quarter packs. Um, one was a Kyoto one which has this really lovely kind of Japanese inspired fabric um, yeah, that kind of patterning and I love the colours of this, the, the kind of turquoisey green with the navy, um, I thought was really nice. 
and then another one this one is fabric additions um says a fat quarter bundle it doesn't say what it was called but I thought again kind of oranges and navies and corals um, and greens and there's some bikes in there I thought this was a really nice mix of colours as well and um, so I might end up making a quilt of some kind for myself and my husband these ones and then I got a couple of backing fabrics. So this one, which is quite a simple pink, um, but it has these little Vs all over it, which look really, make it a bit more interesting, I thought could be the backing for um, the quilt that I'm making for the other baby. And then some more fabric, which is just dots in all sorts of different colors. Again, that I thought was a good uh, backing fabric for another quilt, whatever I end up making or it could be lining fabric for bags depending on what I end up uh, going for first. There we go definitely on the sewing bandwagon this week so apologies if you're here for yarn content. Um, I did get, I, I lied actually, I did get a couple of balls of yarn and that's just this cash merino Aaron that I bought to make some more baby hats um, for friends, children. Um, and this is the denim colorway, I think. Uh, 3,200, sorry, 300205. Um, and this is just my favorite go-to yarn for, um, for baby knits. So it's Debbie Bliss cash merino Aaron and it has merino cashmere and acrylic as a blend um so yeah just a, a kind of bluey jean colored denim colored um yarn for another hat and finally i just wanted to um draw a winner for the knit along that we've been having so we did end up with seven entries um for the summer top knit along and i will put some pictures of some of those finished objects at the end um but thank you so much to everybody that joined in like I said last time I saw a lot of um anchors summer shirts and it was really nice to see the different colors that everybody knit um but there were some really lovely patterns used otherwise um and I draw drew the winner on Friday so I will just pop a picture of the finished post here it was actually number seven um and the lady knit a summer top in linen in this lovely kind of blue colorway um it's actually another petite knit pattern um and it looks absolutely fantastic um so well done to um to the winner of that i will send the pattern over to you shortly and that will be for the spring sorrel um which is this that i've finished but i just wanted other people to be able to enjoy the same um knitting pattern in the future um so thanks so much again for joining in um and i'll do another um prize draw i think in a couple of weeks for the one year anniversary of the podcast um so watch out for that yeah talking of birthday plans though um my a few friends are coming over later on today and we're actually going to be making our own pizzas which will be lovely um i am obsessed with uh goat's cheese and honey on a pizza um with a few peppers as well as just my favorite topping of all time um and you don't often get those types of pizzas i've seen them in italian restaurants occasionally but most of the time um vegetarian pizzas will just have vegetables on them rather than having um any kind of interesting cheese but i absolutely love that combo i think it's great i would normally put walnuts on it as well um but i probably won't tonight because uh, we do have a friend who's allergic to nuts, <laughs> um, so I'll leave those off for now. 
Um, and we're going to be using my sister's pizza oven in our garden, which will be great. And thankfully today, despite the fact that it's October, it is lovely weather. So I'm hoping that this holds out and we don't get too cold later. Otherwise we'll be sitting outside in our coats with the, uh, the pizza oven keeping us warm. And that's pretty much all I have to talk about this week. So apologies a bit light on the content this time, but I'm sure I'll be back with a vengeance in a couple of weeks with a load of things to show you, including much progress on my husband's first ever knitted, hand knit jumper, um, and some more progress on my star blanket, I promise. I did tell myself that I needed to knit a row a day and honestly, I haven't done anything for two weeks on it. So I'll get back on the bandwagon and carry on with that, especially if it gets a bit colder. Thank you so much for watching this shorter episode and um, please do like and subscribe if you can, as that really helps to improve the visibility of the podcast. And I will leave you with some pictures of the finished summer tops for a bit of inspiration. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.